Cool. All right. I will wait until everyone's done checking in. I know we have a few people still setting up. Hi, Manuel. Not much. Just uh, just setting some stuff up for everybody. Uh, I've gotten I've got two different APIs that we're gonna look at today. Uh, they're really simple. You've actually used the Poke API before, so um, yours also looks much nicer than what we're about to do today. So it's it's very it's very simple command line interface. I just want to talk about like how to use the requests like like a request package from Python and what you're gonna get back. What is a JSON? You know stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Brian's Brian's in a techcom meeting, so he's gonna be over there for a little bit. But if you want to like stand up and just, if anyone needs it, help out, that would be really appreciated. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna close this out. Um, the OBS open. Uh, just control C clear. All right, we're still waiting on everyone to get set up. Sorry, taking a minute. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be up and going in just a, just a moment. So we have a few people that are like still checking in. That's fine. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and get you guys started because uh, there's something you guys need to download. Um, let me open Sublime here. So there's a new thing that is actually just using what we installed or using what we installed before, which was, which was pip. Um, pip is the uh, package manager or like package installer for Python. So if you ever want to do anything special with Python that's not just like the programming language Python, you need to install some extra stuff that other people write. Um, some of this is like official from, from the Python organization. Some of it's user written modules. It, there's all sorts of crazy cool stuff that you can do. Um, there's math modules if you're into like any science or data stuff. There's like video game stuff if you're into that, you want to make a video game, all sorts of crazy stuff. So that's, pip is great for that. Um, so if you open your command line, um, and type in pip install requests. Uh, for me, it's gonna say uh, I've already done it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I need to open my actual command prompt because that has the big. Oh, it doesn't. No, it no longer has the bigger text. Uh, Twenty-four. Is that better? Okay. Uh, pip. Oop. Get rid of that URL. Pip install uh, requests. So requests is a package that lets you do uh, simple like HTTP requests. So like if you're on a web browser and you press like go to google.com or whatever, you're gonna be doing a bunch of HTTP requests to get all the stuff for the website sent to your browser and it'll load it. Uh, for, for Python, it's usually much simpler. You're gonna be accessing stuff for just getting plain text information. Um, I'll talk about like, what we're actually getting in response in, an actual, in a minute, uh, but just need to make sure everyone's pip, and, pip works because this is actually very important for today. Uh, and getting this request installed. It's the only thing you need to install. Nothing crazy once you've got that going. It's just having a Wi-Fi connection for the rest of the day. And there we go. So is, is everyone done? Is everyone installing it right now? Uh, mine's not doing anything. Is there something I needed to download? So if, was your PIP working yesterday and the day before? Yeah. Or Monday? Okay, it was not working. Uh, I will come over there and make a minute. 
So, Pip, oh, okay, so Pip is not found. Um, okay, so there is, uh, there in that quest, uh, or in the requirements thing, sorry, okay. uh, there is a link to get this in case it didn't work. Oh, So uh, if yours is not working, it's like, and it, you know how you have to do Pi or P, Python 3 or Python, depending on whatever version you have? If PIP does not work, um, or you have Python 2 installed in your system, make sure to use PIP 3, because um, that's for Python 3. Uh, we want to make sure we, we use the right version, because if you do it for Python 2, uh, you're going to install requests, which is good, but then when you try and run it in a Python 3 environment, it has, it's going to have no idea what's going on. 
Um, it's okay if you install both. It's okay, it's okay if you installed it for Python 2 and for Python 3. It just needs to be there for Python 3. Uh, otherwise, it will, it will cease to function. All right, is everyone, everyone caught up-ish? Everyone good? I don't, I don't see any, any, any wave of hands. So yeah, as long as this, this function works, we can get to actually writing code. Um, so for today, we can go to a new file, uh, and we'll go ahead and name that. Uh, actually, I, I have a new file made. What's up? Uh, day three. Just make a new file, call it day three dot pi or whatever you want to. Alright, so I know we have a few shoggers with the fixing their pip installs, but that's fine. Um, so for today, we're, gonna be, we're not going to be, so we, yesterday we talked about classes, um, Brian did a pretty good job about that. I don't think we're going to be using classes very much today, I don't think we're going to have time to get through and actually use them for what we're doing. Uh, but we're going to be talking about how to use packages in Python. Um, the main thing about packages are they are code that is written just like we wrote yesterday, just like you know we made functions and stuff like that, uh, that exists that someone else made and that you can reference for yourself. So now you can use all those pretty methods that you write. Um, so if you do that, the, the keyword in Java is import. It's the same thing for Python. Um, so if you do import requests, um, no semicolon, nothing fancy like that. Um, you will be able to access anything the request package gives, just like math, like the, the math library in Java, um, just like the scanner object in Java, those kind of things you can actually import and use. Uh, request gives us the ability, uh, ignore the little white squares, that's my linter. Um, uh, request gives us the ability to do HTTP requests. So if you want to, you can access anything from the web, it might come back as garbled mess because it's you know, picture data and stuff like that, but you can get whatever you want. Um, and the nice thing about that is, well, if there are some things that are just text-based, you can manipulate that data and do what you want with. A lot of uh, the industry, like software industry, their APIs, they, that, that, is, that is how they work. Um, you'll be accessing them either web-based or locally on the machine as another imported object. Uh, either one works. Uh, so we will, we will be working today on um, using a, or making a Pokedex. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Pokemon. Um, it's actually, a, it's really, really cute. It's just a simple, hey, enter Pokemon's name and you can get all the sorts of information about it um, and stuff like that. It's nothing, nothing crazy, super simple, just all web-based. And I'll show you just how much data you can get. Like, Pokemon API is actually really slow, but it's how much data you can get in such a short, short amount of time is insane. So today I'm gonna have to, I have a reference document because like I'm responsible. Uh, so we're also going to import a package that should be included by default, so JSON. Uh, if not, pip install JSON, but JSON should be in there. Okay, do not do that. Don't pip install JSON. He told me not to. Uh, so it, if you see what it, mine, mine does this, but your, your Sublime probably doesn't, but it shows me, hey, this is what this is. Uh, JSON is a, is a file format, or uh, is a data type, just like we talked about dictionaries the other day on the, on the first day. Uh, they're really, really similar. And we'll go over some differences, but for right now, let's, let's just move on. Um, so our main thing is, our URL of today is the Pokemon API. So if you go to uh, pokeapi.co, 
you'll be able to actually go to the website and get all the documentation that they have. And so it's really well documented. Um, if you go over, you look at the documentation documentation link. I have a few pages already pulled up, but it is very, very descriptive. Um, anything that you want, it is returned in this format. Um, it's, it's a JSON format, and it gives all sorts of data from the names of your Pokemon to the abilities it can have to whatever. Um, tons of data. So if ever, is everyone like at the website, everyone got it, like know, know what it is, pokeapi.co, so P-O-K-E, uh, api.co. Um, from there, if you notice, if you scroll down, the API like link, we're gonna be copying that in a second, is right here. This is the how we access the data. So really, we're not gonna be going to Pokemon, or pokeapi.co to get all our documentation. That'll just give us a pretty web page. Um, we want the, the, the text. We want the actual information. This, this sort of thing. So we'll copy this URL. Um, we're gonna store it as a variable in our program. So we're gonna say our URL is equal to, in quotes, uh, that URL right there. Everyone following along? I'm good. So to sort of backtrack, um, if you go back to the what they did, yeah. Let me just save that real quick. So what you're doing when you're accessing any sort of web page is that you're actually just initiating a GET request. So when I say GET, I mean GET, isn't like you're getting something. And when you initialize a GET request to a server, which in this case is under the URL of OpenAPI.co, what it's actually doing is saying, okay, this client, which is your computer, wants to get something. And this includes everything from like where it was and which game, what places it originated at, the all the pictures that it had, like all the little sprites that it's had in the game. It doesn't actually give you the, the, the picture, it's actually just URLs to those pictures. But this is a lot of information that, you know, we don't want to sift through by hand. That's why it gives us in a in a data container. If you notice these like these curly brackets and stuff like that, if remember our dictionary that we printed out the first day, how it came out in those curly brackets, that's what this is. Uh, they're they're basically the same format. Uh, JSON is a dictionary that it, it's actually a, what is it like? The, what is the actual de definition for JSON? It's uh, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Yep. It's actually just a standard way of um, basically things on the internet to communicate with one another. It's just the standard that everyone's like, okay, if we want to communicate with each other or access anything, we'll use JSON, and this is what it will. Yep. So if you actually go back to the other thing, which thing? Uh, that, that yeah. Thing. Printed out so it actually looks a lot bigger. But as you can see, if you want any of the forms, or like go up. Um, so if you want any of the, uh, like look at resource for Down there. So if you want any of the resources that are involved, it's just like this is a dictionary. So if you want the abilities, you just say abilities, and it'll give you everything else that's in there. I'll, I'll do that in a second. Yeah. Um, he's getting a little ahead of himself. <laughs> he's getting all excited. All right. So basically, let's copy our, copy our URL. Um, and uh, that, like, not not bad points, by the way. They were actually good. Um, so our, our, we're going to copy our URL, and that's the reason because we're going to be using this a lot. This is going to be our way of accessing any of the things on this website that we want to have access to. Um, how we're going to do this is we're going to say, uh, let's just do a, a really simple one just to, just to look at it right now. Um, we will do the exact same thing that we did right here, where we access for Pokemon 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, our, our res is equal to response dot get and we're going to put in our URL plus 
and then put in quotation marks the Pokemon slash one. So notice this, just like in our concatenation that we did the first day, um, this URL will get added to this. So it'll actually be the V2 slash Pokemon slash one. Um, what's gonna get, what that's gonna do is gonna say, hey, my response, or, or it's not response, it's requests, isn't it? Requests, excuse me, my bad, it's requests. Um, getting a little ahead of myself on my own. Uh, requests will say, uh, I'm gonna use my get function, just like we wrote yesterday, we had other functions like do this or print this or whatever. Um, get whatever's at this URL. And this is literally just gonna be a text dump to this this little this little uh, object right here, and it's going to load all of it with all of this text that we got there, plus some extra things. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so if we actually go ahead and run, just save this and run it, if you don't have errors, you're at a good spot. Uh, if you do have errors, let me know because just make sure it's the exact same thing as this. Um, if you have errors, we have problems. If not, I want to get this sorted out early because this the foundation of everything. So Python day three dot pi should be done no errors just just write that out clear and do it again Python day three dot pi I should also move to my my other one it's prettier all right is every did everyone's run any problems did, did anyone have a problem with their their program you did all right we have we have some people coming around to help out um what what write write it one more time oh the url oh oh yeah yeah python day three dot pi or day three dot pi is whatever your file name is um your, yours might be python three it might be pi it might be it might yeah it might be py it might be python three i don't know because some of you guys had different installation installation paths is yours working Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's doing whatever it says. All right, so d be sure not to run it too much. Uh, so the reason uh, I, I say that is you don't, don't be afraid, but um, the API that we're using has no authentication, which means it can literally get requests all day. Um, that's pretty bad for their servers. It costs money to, to like have stuff on the internet and use that traffic. Uh, so what they've done is they make it where the, uh, they rate limit it, which means you can only access it so many times in a day, um, or in this case, per IP, which... GSU is one big lovely IP, and it's 300, 300 instances per object that you request. So you can only request Bulbasaur 300 times in a day. Um, you can only request Charmander 300 times in a day. You can request Ivasaur 300 times in a day, that kind of thing. So that way you don't, you don't run out that fast, but if there's 30 of us and we do it 10 times each on Bulbasaur, it's gonna run out eventually. Um, so let's just like keep it up. There is a, there's an API that's actually another one. It's called like, like Pokemon, yeah, it's like Pokemon DB or something like that. I don't remember. Uh, that actually saves it. So whatever you, when, whenever you do this, it'll actually save that file on your local hard drive, and so pull it up later. But that's just a nice. I'm just waiting for everyone else to get caught up. So we're gonna talk about some cool things. What's up? Are you, are you have problems? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll actually I'll, I'll volunteer myself now. <laughs> seen is have, are having problems with their their file locations uh, whatever we did yesterday and Monday make sure you're in that same folder so I'm not even in the same folder if I press enter right now it's gonna give me an error saying I don't know where our Python 3 is not even work uh, if I say Python it's gonna be like I don't know what file you're talking about make sure you go to the same folder that you were at yesterday so it's desktop in my case Python bootcamp 2018 um, and then you can type in Python uh, day 3 dot pop and then it'll do nothing. <laughs> Alright, what's up Dallas?
Okay, not response. <laughs> okay, hey everybody. So, uh, a few things that were missed from another person, just want to make sure everyone's caught up. Uh, make sure you do the, the command that I mentioned earlier, which is pip install requests. Um, for mine, it will just say you already have it, but because some of you don't actually have it, make sure you do that. It might be pip3 install requests, depending on your, your Python version. Um, but mine are, mine are, mine's already there, so it doesn't need, not really a big issue. Um, but yeah, just make sure you uh, do the thing. <laughs> Yes, uh, right here. Uh, make sure it's requests. Not not requests. That is bad. That's that's the right way. All right. How many people are having trouble still? Okay, that's fine. You're not free, Brian. working all right yeah make sure you save it what's up this is like the biggest issue so like once we get past this it's it's way less I'll come see you just a second okay that's 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 good thing I mean defense so what we never actually asked for anything um, so if you want we can just say We did it. That's fine. If you want, if you just want to see that, hey, it works, uh, you can make sure you do that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as you press enter and it doesn't go fast, it's fine.
everybody, everyone, everyone right now. We have like a, like two issues, but they're being worked on. Are you, is yours is your working? No, not working. It does not work. All right. Everyone's being caught up, or is caught up, so let's try and move on, because I know we're getting, we're already crunching time. Um, so, what we did was we actually, we, we said, hey, Pokemon server, or Poke API server, give me some text. So, prepare to be amazed by the obnoxiousness that we're about to print out. So just print the results object. It'll actually do absolutely nothing. Oh, just Python, that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't just do that. So I'll, I'll leave the code up there, sorry. Um, Python three or Python day three dot pi. What it's going to do is it's going to say response two hundred. Okay, this is important because this is actually how we know we're doing a URL request and not just getting a bunch of data. Um, this is where requests does something different because notice how when I went to here, I got a bunch of garbage. Uh, it's not really garbage, but it's it's data, but it's it's not very useful garbage at the moment. Um, it's the same URL, but for here we got a response 200. So the, the way this works is request says I'm going to actually return an object with a few attributes. I'm going to say I'm going to give you the data that you got as well as the, the status of your query. So when we put in the URL on our web, on our web browser, what really happens is you get a response message that says, is, was this a good one? Have you ever gotten a 404, like error 404, this is not found? Error, uh, the, the response 200 is everything's okay. Um, so the response code 200 means, okay, we got our stuff, whatever you asked for, I have, I have sent, you're good to go. Um, so if you want to look at that data now, um, go back and do dot JSON, uh, or dot JSON with a, a, a function tag around it, isn't that right? Um, so now if you do that, it's going to dump you all that garbage that we got a second ago. Um, which is the same, which is the same garbage that we have in our, in our, in our web page. Um, you can always cross-reference whatever you have asked for in your Python program with your web browser. So if you want to know something, um, you can see if it's in there that way. Because uh, your web browser is a little bit prettier to look at rather than terminal code because it has no spacing whatsoever. Chrome should do that. I don't know why it doesn't. There's an extension for it? Okay, well, I don't have it. I need it. So I don't, I don't know if some of you guys heard them, but basically, if you want to do web dev and you want to see this in a much prettier manner rather than this garbage, uh, Firefox is the way to go because it makes it look all pretty. So. Yay, Firefox. Um, all right, so now we actually want to process this data. This is pretty useless to us right now in the, in the giant garbled mess that it is. Um, but remember how I'm, I mentioned earlier, a JSON file or a JSON object is basically the same as a dictionary in Python. And the nice part about it is you can interact with it almost the exact same way. Uh, there's a few tidbits that are different, but like very, very little. Um, so if we actually get this, this JSON, let's not print it out anymore. Let's actually assign it to something. So we're going to say our data is equal to our response.json. All right, so don't run your code yet, not yet, but we should be running our code pretty iteratively just to make sure it doesn't crash. Because if you get a crash, we want to catch this early on before we start doing processing stuff, it gets annoying. Um, so we'll save our data as something, and now we actually want to do, anything, do something with it. Well, it's kind of hard to read at 
when we're looking at all this mess and see how there's like version group details and move learn methods and all these weird little attributes that we probably don't even care about. We just want to get some moves. We just want to look at the po Pokemon's names and stuff like that. Um, so let's actually do that real quick. Um, when you go in and you want to do data, accessing it like we did a dictionary earlier it will do the same thing. So if we do something like data, data, and then in square brackets, quotations moves, that actually accesses everything in the move section. So it looks kind of gross right now, um, but if you look at this, this one has a form section right here. This is the first thing. This is its URL for the form, yada, yada, yada. If we look down, we control F moves. Um, right here, we actually start to get to the moves detail. This is really gross, it's, it's really ugly, but when we do this in Python, it actually organizes everything for us really, really nicely, really, really pretty. So if we want to do that real quick, we can say, uh, if you want to see all the things um, without it being disgusting, we'll say, we'll do a for loop. For key in data dot keys. And I will explain that in just a second. Um, print key. Oop, don't add a tilde there. Or uh, accent. So, do you not? No, I only want the key name. I don't want the, the, the actual element. I just want the name. Because otherwise I'm going to get each object's code shenanigans. Um, which is going to give me like the block, same block of text. I want to say it already told um, so basically, what this is going to do is it's going to say, I'm going to give, uh, double, double check here, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just double checking. Um, this is going to say, what actual main things of my dictionary do I have? So if I run this real quick, uh, clear, our CLS, there we are, uh, python day3.py, it's going to take a minute, and it's going to say, hey, we did it, here are the things that we can access. Uh, forms, abilities, uh, stats, the name, its weight, its moves, sprites, the items it can hold, all those sorts of things. Now, this is way nicer to read, um, but also notice that it doesn't have all the same thing. Notice how if we go here, it doesn't have something like level learned at. Well, that's because the way this is working is uh, there's the relationship is the key value pair, how I mentioned on Monday. Um, what that means is we're mapping the key, let's say forms, to all the things that are whatever is inside the forms list. We're mapping the abilities to a list that has all the abilities that it can ever learn. We're having the stats key map to a list of stats that it has, right? Those are the kind of things, the kind of relationship that we have set up. Um, so if I want to, I can actually just say, well now we have, we have the, the data and we're going through each key. If I want to say, let's do something really easy. Um, print, and then we'll do data, and we'll do height. And I forgot, this is Python 3, so I have to add parentheses. All right, so if you run this real quick, real quick, takes a second, um, you'll see the number print out the seven. Um, so the, the height of this Pokemon, which is Bulbasaur, is seven. I don't know what seven even means. I'm I, don't, I doubt it's feet, because that'd be scary. Um, but like, it's seven, whatever that means. Uh, so when we asked for is we said, hey, API, I want the Pokemon that is labeled one. I want to store the value of all the data that you just gave me about that Pokemon. And I'm going to iterate over all the little subsections that you have about this Pokemon. And at the very, very end, we're going to say, hey, I want this Pokemon's height. That's what you're doing. So whenever you have the square brackets right here, you're asking for the key and whatever value is associated with that. In this case, it's an integer called seven. That's a type. Um, for other ones, you might have a list. So if we print, uh, I'm trying to do something small. Uh, data, I think it's abilities, pretty, pretty short. Um, if you do print the data abilities, run this again, um, you're actually gonna get a, a list. See how that's square brackets? That means a list in Python. And then the curly brackets um, is how we denote another dictionary. So that's the cool thing about JSON files and Python dictionaries is you can have dictionaries, inside lists, inside dictionaries, inside lists, and have all sorts of data stored in just one big one big object. Now that, that probably seems a little scary, but the, the nice thing is this one's way smaller and we can actually break it down. Um, what I'm saying is I have a list from square bracket to square bracket um, that has a few things inside of it. It has a dictionary, in this case, um, a dictionary with things like a slot attribute, the is hidden attribute, the ability attribute, and each of these map to another number with the colon. Um, so a slot is going to be slot 3. 
uh, is hidden is true, it's a boolean. Um, and then ability will give you another dictionary with some information about it, like the URL you can find more information about it at, its name, and that's actually it. That's, that's the only thing for the, the ability there. Um, and it has another one, it has another, another ability, and then that's actually only two abilities, that's super small. Um, so if you want to actually like look at it a little bit nicer, um, instead of doing just print all of the abilities, you do for um, ability uh, mod in data abilities in four colon. Um, you can actually do whatever you want on these things. So that, notice how we have two abilities in here. So we have. Um, for, Ability mod will be assigned each of those dictionaries. There will be ability mod for the whatever this one is, which is the chlorophyll, and then another one for overgrow. So if we do this, we can just print it out real quick. Print ability mod. Run this again, and you're going to get a, ni a little bit prettier version without the square brackets because you're actually separating them into their own objects. Uh, a one ability and then the second ability. So does that, does that make a little bit more sense? You can just keep breaking down each individual section to show what you want. Now, the real nice thing about this is, instead of having to go through each thing and do a for loop to get what you want, um, you can actually do something like this. I'm gonna comment this out real quick so we don't have so much on the screen. Um, I'm gonna say print data. I'm gonna go abilities. And then we're gonna do another square bracket with another quotes. So if you see how the way it's structured over here, um, it's abilities, which is a list of abilities, and it has a sub-attribute called ability. I don't know why it's redundant like that, but it is. And then in there, it's going to have name. It's the same way in the square brackets in Python code. So you're going to go through a, the list of abilities, you're going to get that one ability, and you're going to ask for its name. So if I say, um, if I say abilities, I'll actually do the for, a for loop for here, because it's actually a little bit easier. Um, uh, abilities, ability mod, in data, abilities, we will print the ability mod of ability in the name. Now the reason I did it like that, it's a little bit weirder how I, I just replaced data abilities with the ability, with the, the ability mod, it's because I'm substituting whatever object I just got with ability mod. It makes it a little bit easier to read. Um, so if you run this, you're going to see it's going to say it's chlorophyll and then overgrow after R7. Um, is everyone everyone like caught up? Is everyone's code working? If you have any questions, it's like the perfect time. Um, if you guys don't understand what I'm talking about, now is the perfect time to tell me. Uh, I know it's a little bit confusing, um, but basically you're just narrowing down a, a list of things. So uh, in my data object, I have a ton of things in it. Forms, abilities, oops, oh, that was weird. Um, oh God, what have I done? Oh God, um, CLS. So we're just gonna run that again, hope it's a little prettier. Hey, all right, so we have, um, in our data, we have forms, abilities, stats, all these things. And then I'm gonna say, okay, well, what if I just want one of those things? What if I wanna look at the contents of just one? Well, I can print the height of one of them and it turns out to be seven. Um, if I want the abilities, as you saw above, it was like that, that big curly braces of ability names. Um, and then if you can break it down further, you just get the ability and you get its name. Uh, it's just literally like a giant search tree of like, I have all these things. I want a subsection and then a subsection and a subsection until I get whatever value you want. Um, does that make sense? All right, cool. Um, so now what if I want to say, okay, for any Pokemon that I enter, I want to ask for like, what if I want to look at Pichu? What if I want to look at all the moves that uh, Charmander can learn? What if I want to do all those things? Well, now it makes a little bit modular code. So right now we're going to be working with, uh, like we're, we're statically inputting that we're only ever going to ask for Pokemon 1. We're only ever going to ask for the, the height for the Pokemon. Then we're only going to ask for the abilities. Well, that's not very, very modular. We want to handle user input. What if the user says, hey, I want to look at like, uh, Pokemon Potato. Well, it should tell you, hey, Pokemon Potato doesn't exist. I mean, that's that's what Pokedexes do. Um, so our, our, our job here now is to make this actually a, a program that users can interact with instead of just pressing enter on the program on the command line and it doing some garbage. Uh, so that for that we're going to be using some user input. Super easy in Python. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and comment most of this for a second. We'll be rewriting the key parts in a second. Uh, so we're going to keep doing this for a second, and we're going to say, uh, we're going to say our in, uh, not, not in, don't use the keyword, that is a, that is a user in, is input, and then in parentheses you can say whatever you want to see in the terminal. So you know how in Java you go system.out.println, into whatever you want to do, and then you say scanner object, t takes whatever thing it is and dumps it to a variable? Well, Python makes that one line. Um, all of that one line with the input function. So if you say input and then say please enter a Pokemon name, add a space after that. Um, when you run this, we're actually going to comment this out too because I don't want to waste our, our beautiful uh, rate limiting. Um, I'm going to enter this and say enter a Pokemon name, Pikachu. And it's going to just, it's going to exit because I didn't actually print it. Um, print user in. So if we run this again, say Pikachu, it's going to say Pikachu. That's how you do user input in Python. It's super simple. Just input whatever you want to say as your string, and then you can now use it however you would. Now this this is way, way shorter than one in Java where you do system.out.println, enter what you want, and then use your scanner object to assign a thing, to make a scanner object, and it's all annoying. Um, Python's very simple. Um, all right, so now, now that we have a Pokemon name, well, notice how this is a number. Uh, that you don't can't search Pokemon by number. Well, except if the API lets you to, you can change. You can search them by names. So for what I did here, um, I'm gonna just like totally cheat the system here and rewrite that here. Um, we're gonna say we're gonna put back in our response, but after we get the name, I'm gonna say okay. Instead of asking for a number, we're now gonna put in user in. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, Pokemon API. I'm going to full screen this because our code's getting a little long. Uh, Pokemon API, I'm going to give you the base URL. I'm going to ask for a Pokemon. I'm going to ask for that Pokemon by name. So whenever you say Pikachu, it should actually do that without giving you an error. Um, just to make sure, print response.json. It'll either error or it won't. <laughs> That's the, the, the beauty of programming. Uh, if you run this, what's going to happen is you're going to say, okay, I want to do Pikachu. Okay, Pikachu, it's going to take a second and it's going to dump all the information about Pikachu. Um, you can run that again and say, like, Charmander. Charmander, it's going to take a second and dump all the information about Charmander. Hopefully. It's taking a minute. There we go. Dumping the information about Charmander. Um, right now, this is, we can actually start to use this now. This is a very modular way of saying, hey, I can get any Pokemon now, now I can print any of its abilities, any of its information, so we can actually go ahead and put this back. Um, if we say we want to print the Pokemon's height, let's get rid of printing out that giant, giant garbage, and saying, we'll say user in plus quotations plus height is, there we go, okay. So our program is literally just, I'm going to clean this up a little bit or reorganize some things so it's a little bit prettier um, so we don't have stuff all over the place. Um, yep. Yep, right there. Got to get rid of that. All right, make sure data exists. So your program should look like this at the moment. You're going to have your URL. You're going to have your user in, which is asking for an input of a Pokemon name. You're going to print whatever your, the, po the person put in. And you're going to say, hey, API, give me whatever I'm asking for at this, at this URL, which happens to be your Pokemon name. Uh, you're going to get your data back because remember, if you just use your RES, it's going to just say response, right? You want the actual data from there. Um, and from there, we're going to say, hey, we're just going to check its the Pokemon's height real quick. That's it. So we're going to say user in, which is going to be like Pikachu's, Charmander's, whatever. Height is whatever we get back in our data field. So if you run this, we say uh, Pikachu. It's going to say Pikachu, and it's going to say, well, that is not a, a string. So str, forgot about that. Thanks, Python. Um, I'll, 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 I'll scoot this over so you guys can see that. Um, Pikachu, Pikachu, but Pikachu's height is 4. If we run this again, we say Charmander, 
we'll say Charmander, and it's going to say Charmander's height is six. So now we can actually start to access different information for whatever we want. Now, imagine the, the capabilities that you can use. Um, yeah. Imagine the capabilities you can use when you have an API that says, okay, I'm using like Google Maps or something. I can ask for a longitude or latitude. I can ask for a street address. All that's doing right here is doing the same thing. It's breaking down your whatever your request is into little bitty parts and getting whatever information that is. So if I say, hey, Google Maps, I want this address. Well, it's going to give your, your phone or whatever you're using a, a huge ton of information. Where that Maybe it's going to give you the, the longitude and latitude. It might give you some pictures about the place. It might give you all sorts of stuff. That is what this API is doing, except in our case, it's about Pokemon. Um, the main reason we're not using Google Maps or anything like that is because Google is requires a lot of setup. Uh, you have to use some like authentication and stuff like that. So Pokemon is super simple. They don't get they don't add any like tips or tricks or any passwords or anything like that. It's all really really easy. Um, so but yeah, that is like whatever you're using your phone, everything is built on an API somewhere. Uh, this is all you're doing. So if you want to make a Pokedex, make it all pretty in your phone app. This is it. This is how you do that. So like when I go when I go on my Yep. So when you're in the middle of a, a Google Maps route, like you're just driving down the road and it's saying, hey, turn left, it's really saying, hey, this is your geolocation, this is about how fast you're going because of your accelerometer and your GPS data, yada, yada, yada. It's way more complex. Um, but it says, given this information, you're going to take left in about 600 feet, in about 500 feet. Um, and it's going to say, hey, take left now because you're within our, within our range. It's literally just a bunch of math, a um, bunch of function calls, a bunch of math, and it's all like... Sometimes if you look at them, they're really simple, even though they make it look really, really pretty. Um, so yeah, this is this is like literally the backbone of almost all software architecture. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, if you think about it too, um, doing anything, like searching anything on Google, it's the same thing. Yep. You're just doing a little text input, and then you're going to the previous backend, and Google says, okay, so you gave me like a key phrase, or like a word, like, I don't know, Python. And then they will go through all of their indexes that they have in their database, So I just opened a, a Google page real quick, and if you notice, I, uh, I put in google.com, and in the console of your web browser, which all of you guys have, um, if you pressed F12 on your web browser, you should be able to open it. This is just a little t tidbit to show what I'm talking about. Um, notice how there's a few things that we're talking about. There's a post request, which we haven't done yet, um, and I don't think we're going to do today. And then a git request. Well, the git request is exactly what we did earlier. It's going to say, hey, I'm looking for like... Well, in this case, it's it's Google, so it's a little bit more complicated. But it has basically just a bunch of pictures. It has your location. Um, it has like because the the art of the day is Women's Day. It's going to give you like the the JavaScript files for the Women's Day picture and how this works. So when I hover over it, it does a little like animation. All that stuff is gotten from whatever we're doing right now. It just says, "Hey, this is where the stuff is. Load it." Um, if you go down to here, it's going to say some more stuff about like. Oh god, that's 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 complicated. I don't like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's literally just it's like, hey, this is your this is your text box. This is your search bar. So when I pri type in like um, Pokemon API, pulls up all this sort of stuff. This is literally just a prettified JSON. Like if you actually look look at the back like the back end of what's what's being shown, it's a JSON file. This is an entry right here in in a JSON that says this is entry number one for website. This is entry number two for website. Yada yada yada. It's really really cool. It's made very very pretty. Um, refresh. Like if you notice, it's it's giving me stuff about like pictures and um, like like infra like little like counts of how many things are loaded, um, all sorts of stuff. That is how that is what we're doing, but in a very very simple manner. Because I mean, this is this is what this is for. 
Um, so now let's say we don't want just the Pokemon's height. Uh, we want some more information. Let's say we want to list all the moves a Pokemon has. Um, well now, that's pretty easy actually. Notice how before, um, when I ran uh, this, this little snippet, um, we had a thing called moves. Um, right here, yeah. Uh, right there. See so Pikachu. Yeah, uh, we're running out of time. I don't, I don't mind staying a little bit longer. We can, we're going to continue going over this a little bit tomorrow and making more classes and stuff. Uh, but this is kind of important to get out of the way. Um, so we're, hey, Pikachu's height is four, and we have some some keys that we have access to. So now we have access to moves. If we want to list all the Pokemon's moves, we can do the same thing. We can say, just like we did above, four um, elements in data moves. We want to print um, element. Now that's probably going to get be a little bit gross because each move probably is not just its name. It's going to give you some more information. But if you run this and say Pikachu, Pikachu, it's going to dump you a whole bunch of moves. Um, surprisingly, moves have a lot of information. They tell you what generation they came from, what level you learned them at, all these sorts of things that are actually related to Pokemon. But if you notice, there's a, a section right down here called move and then name. That's what we're looking for. That's the data. You have to know what your data looks like to be able to manipulate it. If you look right over here, um, I have a Pokemon move. So the documentation for Pokemon API is all available online. Go to that URL, just click the documentation tab up here. Anything that you ask for is nice and prettified over here. It says, hey, this is what a move will look like. It'll have an ID, it'll have a name, it'll have like its power and information, stuff like that. We can actually access that now. And it, it gives you some really nice like details telling you whether it's a string or an integer. So you can all process it ahead of time. Um, so if we go back to our, our, our program, we can go element. We're going to say move. And then we're going to do another one and say name. Because what we're really asking for is going to say a Pokemon which is going to give us a Pokemon with all of its stuff. And inside of there, we're going to say, I'm going to just move this right next to each other so I can keep talking about it. Um, we're going to have the Pokemon, which is the data. We're going to say, give me all of its moves. And then for each move, give me its name. Does that make sense? Because each in here, we say the Pokemon, it has a name. So that this is a Pokemon's abilities. Uh, but in this whole thing, it describes what Pokemon are. Then we go over to the move thing. Uh, the move description, it's going to say an ID, it's name, it's move, all these sorts of stuff. Uh, it's power, anything like that. So if you run this program right now, I'll full screen it again, or make it a little bit larger. Um, we'll pr pull over here, we're going to CLS, Python, day 3.py. Just say Pikachu, say Pikachu, it's going to give it Pikachu's height and all the moves Pikachu can learn. Just like that, you have made it where you can look at any of the Pokemon's moves. So this has like submission, counter, strength, thundershock, thunderbolt, you know, some more iconic things for Pikachu. I don't know how it can know, learn dig, but it can. Um, but yeah, this is literally how you can you can break down information and get anything that you want to. You can even test stuff in Python. If you want to say, does it have a key? You can ask, does it have a key? Um, you can say, uh, do I, does it have this many entries in the in this value? It, it can tell you. Um, if you want to do any processing, that's how a lot of your data structure stuff and uh, applications work. Um, if you do a Google search, what it's saying is, let me get the, the Google page back up. When I pull Google search, since each one of these are an entry in, a, in an API, I can say, hey, of these 15 million results that I get you, I only want to give you 10 of them. So we can ask you for entries zero through 10 or zero through 50, depending on how big your page is. And then when you go down here, it does a new subset of all of those all of those entries. That is, this is the backbone of the internet. <laughs> um, so now what you're doing is uh, you can print out any of the moves of your Pokemon, and that's it's pretty pretty nice and simple. And we're running out of time, so I, I would do more, but we had a little errors setting up, which is fine. Um, and we can talk more about it tomorrow. But does everyone kind of like understand what we're doing? Just getting data, filtering out what we want, um, and then printing it out, and in this place displaying it. Um, in the future, for like a hackathon or anything like that, you can take this data and make it very, very pretty. That's what HTML and CSS are for. Um, if you want to make an application for a hackathon or anything like that, it's like, it's 
all very, very streamlined after you know what's going on. So. All right, that's all, that's, all, that's all we have for today, unless you guys want to stick around, but, like, we, have, we all have homework and stuff to do, so. All right, we're good? Of course.